We all know Disney loves to toss in Easter eggs to its past work in their films. From hidden Mickeys to sneaky references that go unnoticed until someone points them out, Disney films are littered with callbacks and references to other Disney films. But what about films and shows that aren't owned by the Mouse House? Well, Disney has you covered there. Sometimes the egg is so well hidden, it might take you years to find it. Or you just check in with CBR, obviously. But don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with new posts from CBR Daily. Can't read that in the museum. Moana, can you smell what the rock is cooking? Disney's Moana did a great job at portraying the culture of ancient Polynesia, showcasing the right respect for the people, costumes, and mythology to create a believable film. One of the conduits that helped sell the believability was Dwayne Johnson's portrayal of the demigod Maui. Maui was a blast, serving as not only comedic relief for the journey, but also to guide our heroine Moana through her journey. Not every day you get a chance to meet your hero. In the film, the titular Moana is chosen by the ocean to return a magical relic to a goddess while also aiming to save her people from a terrible blight. Maui serves as her magical aid, and despite his awesome powers and charming wit, just like Dwayne Johnson, the filmmakers couldn't resist throwing in a very subtle reference to Johnson's previous personage. Before he became one of the most popular actors working in cinema today, Dwayne Johnson was a WWE champ known globally as The Rock. Many fans still refer to Johnson as The Rock, and Disney found a subtle way to include this piece of mythology into their own. In the film, the ridiculously dumb chicken known as Hehe decides it's a good idea to eat a rock. Later in the film, Maui actually tries to eat Hehe, which would have actually put the rock back in the rock. We're glad Hehe didn't actually get eaten, but it would have been fun to see Maui eat a rock at some point. I love it! Zootopia. We gotta be honest with you, we didn't see this one coming. Disney films are always chock full of clever references, but those hidden easter eggs are usually from other family-friendly medias or classic cinema at best. Zootopia decided to abandon convention and insert a very obvious reference towards one of the greatest and most mature television shows this decade. We are, of course, talking about the hit AMC show Breaking Bad. In the film's third act, Nick and Judy find themselves in a lab that will look eerily familiar to fans of the award-winning show. In the lab, there are two sheep named, wait for it, Walter and Jesse, who are both sporting yellow jumpsuits akin to the ones that Walter White and Jesse Pinkman used while cooking their batches in Breaking Bad. We're not too sure what kids thought was going on here, but we have to admit that we got a serious kick out of seeing this reference in the film. The film would also toss in a quick reference to The Godfather, which makes us wonder if Disney was really making this film for adults with all these references. I'm not through with you yet! Wreck-It Ralph. Ugh, where to even start with this one? This whole film could technically be considered a giant easter egg in and of itself, with the constant references to video game culture and classic game characters popping into the film, from Bowser to the Pac-Man ghost to Sonic the Hedgehog himself. In short, we could probably make a few videos on all the easter eggs in Wreck-It Ralph, but we're gonna focus on one that's a bit more obscure. Early on in the film, Ralph finds himself the victim of depression, unable to accept the fact that he's a villain and won't be rewarded with a medal because of it. He goes to the game Tappers to talk to the bar's namesake about his problems. Keep your eyes peeled for bonus easter eggs in the scene, Tapper suggests that Ralph should check out the lost and found as it's theoretically possible that someone might have forgotten one. The first item Ralph picks up is easy, the classic Mario mushroom. But what about that random exclamation mark? This one's a bit tougher for the uninitiated as a random exclamation mark means nothing, but the sound cue is a dead giveaway. What is that? No. Disney tossed in a reference to the classic game series Metal Gear Solid. While Disney films are always family friendly, the Metal Gear series is an M-rated video game series from Japan that sees super spy Solid Snake take on all manner of nefarious villains through the decades. It's nice to see that Disney's not limited to simply referencing kids stuff. My vessel is magnificent and fierce. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. A pirate's life for me indeed. The Pirates of the Caribbean films are massive hits, with four already in the chest and a fifth one soon to be pillaged and plundered. I, Jack, the world needs you back something fierce. Part of that success comes from the likability and charm of Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow and his crusade against the nefarious and supernatural beings that get in his way, or, as he likes to put it, steals his ship and proceeds to blow holes in it. By the time the third film has pulled into port, Jack has more or less buried the hatchet with his former first mate Barbosa and are working together to save the day. Early on in the third film, the former villain actually tosses in a fun little easter egg to the audience, but in this case, we'll have fun and call it a little act of piracy. While talking to Chao Yun Fett's Xiao Feng, Barbosa himself Self declares to the pirate lord that his intentions are strictly honorable. Sound familiar? Well, if you're a fan of Bond, James Bond, 
It might. The line is actually lifted straight from Dr. No when 007 himself confronts Ursula at the beach. Considering both films take place in the tropics and are smash hits, we're not surprised the folks at Disney wanted to tip their hats to the international spy in their film. Frozen. We will not let it go with our love of Frozen. The film was a huge hit after all, full of likable characters and insanely catchy tunes. What the film didn't have too much of, though, was Easter egg references to non-Disney films. We know of the classic Tangled homage by now, along with the homage to Mary Poppins. But where could the other egg be hiding in this film? It's actually hiding in plain sight, and you probably just never knew about it. Early on in the film, before Elsa decides to ice things over, the sisters can be seen together at the Royal Ball, where such notable guests as the Duke of Weaselton are present. The Duke, for whatever reason, decides to show off his amazing dance moves. But those moves aren't just random shenanigans. Oh no. That chicken-inspired dance move will be instantly recognizable to fans of the hit show Arrested Development. Not only that, but the cute line, We finish each other's sandwiches, also comes from the television series, which stars Jason Bateman and Michael Sarah. We're thinking someone at Disney is a fan. It's like spooning a warm marshmallow. Big Hero 6 Big Hero 6 was a huge surprise hit for Disney. Adapted from a Marvel comic that you never heard of, the film made us all fall in love with the lovable robot Baymax. Seriously, can we get a sequel going so we can spend more time with him soon? Big Hero 6 followed the story of Hiro Hamada, a young genius who specializes in robotics, who often sneaks out to compete in underground fighting competitions with his creations. Due to unfortunate circumstances, Hiro actually lives with his beloved Aunt Cass, who cares for him like a son. Is this starting to sound familiar? It's called Recycling. You wouldn't be wrong in guessing that Big Hero 6 has some amazing similarities to Spider-Man. These similarities are a departure from the comics, and we think that the team at Disney wanted to pay homage to the Marvel family, a company that the Mouse House owns. The familiar setting doesn't end there, though. Another clever Easter egg comes courtesy of the villain. Yokai has some uncanny similarities to Dr. Octopus. Both are disgruntled men of academic genius working in the scientific field and eventually become all-powerful supervillains, both of whom control their respective enhancements with the the help of advanced technology. In each case, the octopus arms and the microbots respectively. To cap it all off, Doc Ock was part of a team of supervillains called the Sinister Six, which is essentially the evil version of the Big Hero Six. Maybe one day they'll have a crossover. I ate my grandma. Moana. There's always a bigger fish. That line may have crossed your mind while watching Moana, and even right now you might be thinking to yourself, where have I heard that before? In the film, Moana eventually makes her way into the underworld, a dangerous realm full of monsters and magic. It doesn't take long, but our young heroine quickly finds herself in major trouble as a sea monster quickly wraps its long tongue around Moana and tries to eat her as a quick lunch treat. Thankfully for her, she was saved after another creature decides to eat the monster that attacked Moana. The sequence itself and the creature design might come off as familiar to those well versed in the Force. The scene is actually a little homage to The Phantom Menace. While not everyone's favorite film, it's fun to see Disney incorporate elements of the prequel films into their film, specifically the moment when Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and yes, Jar Jar, navigate the planet's core on Naboo. It's there that the trio are attacked and almost eaten by a sea creature which latches onto their submarine with its terrifying tongue, only to be saved at the last minute by another, much larger creature. There's always a bigger fish. Thanks for the save, nature. Give me back my roadie. Captain America Civil War. It must be great owning so many properties. Not only does Disney make insane profits on their many films, but they get to continuously reference other properties without having to worry about paying a copyright fee. We've seen it a few times now, where a film like Frozen might reference Tangled, or Moana can give a subtle shout out to Big Hero 6. But what about when one of the biggest properties on Earth references the other biggest property on Earth? Case in point, Captain America Civil War. The film was not only a smash hit with critics and fans, but saw the Avengers literally smash each other up, resulting in a broken team heading into the impending Infinity War. One of those inciting battles, though, couldn't resist making reference to another Disney-owned property. Making his MCU debut, web-slinger Spider-Man decided to take down giant Ant-Man by referring to a particularly famous and old movie. The film in question? The Disney-owned Star Wars franchise, specifically The Empire Strikes Back. Inspired by the at, -AT sequence, Spidey ropes up Scott Lang's giant legs and brings him down. The Rebellion would be proud. This reference is perhaps a bit too obvious, but it's still amazing to watch it happen. You want to see the really cool part? The Jungle Book. We didn't think The Jungle Book was going to be that good, but it was, and we're ever so grateful for it. The Jungle Book delighted critics and fans when it came out to cinemas, being regarded as one of the best remakes in recent history and one of the best live-action versions of the Disney catalog. From the breathtaking motion capture and CGI to the likability of Mowgli to the top-notch voice acting. How many lives is a man cub worth? 
The Jungle Book felt alive. It was also live with small little nods to the Disney family and even to things that aren't owned by Disney. How is this possible, you might be asking? The film takes place in the wild. There can't be that much in the way of film references out there. The film does a clever job at sneaking in multiple Easter eggs. A small one was actually hiding in plain sight the whole time, as two scars on Mowgli seem to spell out the letters R, lowercase, and K. These stand for original Jungle Book author Rudyard Kipling. But even better is the hysterical joke that they had to insert because Christopher Walken is in the film. He plays King Louis, whose hall is decked out with treasure. One of those items just happens to be a cowbell, which summons Louis after Mowgli gives it a shake. This is a well-played shout-out to the Saturday Night Live sketch in which Walken famously states, more cowbell. Let's be honest, you would have done it too had you been given the chance. I got him! Spider-Man Homecoming The film may not be out yet, but Eagle Eye fans are already spotting some insane easter eggs in the upcoming film, Spider-Man Homecoming. In the third reboot of our favorite web-slinger, Spider-Man, now played by Tom Holland, will go up against one of the most famous villains from that series, the Vulture. The film is said to be inspired by the works of John Hughes and will really focus in on the high school angle of Peter Parker's life, hence Homecoming. When he's not worrying about normal teenage problems, however, Parker is teaming up with Iron Man and trying to stop crime. One of those threats our young spider will be facing is the vulture. Vulture is usually depicted as a bald old man, but it looks like Michael Keaton's take on the winged baddie will be appropriately updated for modern times. It's perfect, thank you. Yeah, we don't really it's need to start a conversation. Okay. But despite the modernity, the filmmakers have not forgotten where the vulture came from. In trailer 2, fans noticed that one of the license plates in the tunnel shot contained quite the clever egg. The plate in question reads SM2-0563. Sounds like gibberish, you might be thinking. You'd be wrong, as the plate represents the first appearance of the vulture in the comics, in Amazing Spider-Man number 2, which was published in May of 1963. Neat! We're sure there'll be even more awesome easter eggs in the final product, so stay tuned to CBR are to stay up to date on them. Let me just stop you there. That's all for our list today, folks. What did you think of our list? What's your favorite non-Disney Easter egg? Do you like keeping an eye out for them or prefer looking them up later on? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome content from CBR.